Today's video is sponsored by Squarespace. Hey guys, in today's video, I'm going to be going over the checklist of things you need to do before an exam. Without further ado, let's get started. Yeah. One week before your test, the first thing you want to do is set up a study schedule. Now this one week period is kind of an estimate. You might consider extending this out to a two week or three week or even month long study period. It depends on how much content is covered in your test. So it's really up to your own judgment. I have a video that goes pretty in depth about how to set up a study schedule for final exams or just for other big exams in general. I will link that in the cards here, maybe here, I think it's here. But to sum it up, you basically want to make a list of everything you need to know and how you're going to review each topic and then split up the topics into each day or week of studying. Now that you've got your study plan, the next thing to do is to actually study. It's super important to make time for and prioritize your studying. Treat your one hour or two hour or, you know, half hour, 15 minute study period as if it were an assignment that was due the next day. You might feel like for these types of urgent assignments, it feels like we're always able to make time to do it. I don't mean like actually manufacture time. If you have figured out a way to do that, the Ministry of Magic wants a word with you, but rather just rearrange your priorities so that you will get everything on your study schedule done. And sure, sometimes studying for a test that seems kind of far away can just fall to the wayside and feel less important than a homework assignment due the very next day. But your study time is like a workout for your brain. During your study time, make sure you also ask questions for anything you come across that you get a bit confused about. I think the best way to do this is to just go along, review your notes, do flashcards, study as you normally would, but if you come across something that needs clarification, just note it down on a post-it note or in a Google Notes or Apple Notes or whatever note app you prefer. And then you can email your teacher or go to office hours or even form a study group with other friends who hopefully know the material well. The week or so right before your exam is essentially your last chance to clarify your understanding of the material before you start really hammering it into your memory. You don't want to accidentally memorize the wrong information, so make sure you clarify things as you go. And lastly, stick to a regular sleep schedule during the few days leading up to your exam. It's a common misconception that if you slept for, say, four hours one night, you can simply make up for it by sleeping 12 hours the next night. But that's just not quite how the physiology of our brain and sleep actually works. Feelings of alertness and wakefulness are really based on sticking to a sleep cycle rather than on counting a particular number of hours total. So in the days before your test, make sure you are actually sticking to that sleep schedule that's been working well for you, because when you break it, maybe you don't feel so bad the day immediately after, but within two or three days, oh boy, you will feel it. You will feel that groggy, I cannot think, my brain is full of cotton type of sensation, and that is not exactly what you want to be feeling on the morning of a test. Next, let's focus in a little closer on the night before your exam. In your study schedule, I recommend leaving the night or two before your exam relatively empty of any hardcore studying. Instead, focus this time on just the concepts you're struggling with the most. Going back to my comparison of studying as working out and taking a test as competing, I don't think it's exactly a great idea to do a super hardcore workout the day before a race or a soccer match and you don't want to do the same thing to your brain either. Instead of studying for one or two or three or four hours, stick to like an hour or less. I'd say 30 minutes is a good number, honestly. And to make the most of this short amount of time, focus in on the things you've struggled with the most so far. Ideally, you'll have been noting these things down in your Google Notes, Apple Notes, Post-it, other note-taking recording software that you were using to write down your questions. 
This way you get a lot more memorization and learning done than if you were just going through the motions of things you already know. Beyond the ghost, we stand on and for breakfast, lunch, and or dinner, whichever meals you like to eat, do with some carb loading. Yes, I did get this from cross country and track advice. So just like your muscles and the rest of your body, your brain runs on glucose as its primary fuel. And hopefully those of us who have passed basic biology can remember that glucose comes from carbohydrates. Now, pretty much all food groups contain carbohydrates like the chemical compound, but carbs like bread or pasta or rice are especially abundant in this helpful material. And as applies to athletes, it's best to have this large, nutritious, energy-fueling meal the day before your big event. That way it has plenty of time to digest and really process and absorb into your system. Honest, honestly Additionally, you want to prepare all of the materials that you will need for your test. For something like a large standardized test like the SAT or an AP test, there are, you know, checklists out there because you can't bring everything you own in your backpack with you. This doesn't apply as much to online tests as they are this year because you are in your room, your house, you can just walk around and pick things up, but you can save those precious test minutes by having all the things you'll need really close at hand. So make sure you sharpen your pencils, charge your calculator batteries, put everything you need into your backpack, etc, etc. While yes, you could do this the morning of, usually the anxiety is a little bit stronger then and you'll be more distracted and more likely to forget things. So might as well do your future self a favor and just pack it all up now. And lastly, make sure you get some sleep. Do not, do not pull an all-nighter. Please, I'm begging you, don't pull an all-nighter. As I'm sure many of us have experienced, we tend to get a little bit loopier and less productive the longer we stay up. So the very limited amount of work you can get done during an all-nighter is really not going to be worth that much. The negative impact of having stayed up super late or not having slept at all will be a much greater harm to your mental state than that limited amount of studying will be beneficial. And don't drastically alter your sleep schedule either, even if you're not staying up all night. As I mentioned earlier in the week before section, your body functions best when you stick to a regular sleep schedule, which facilitates feeling awake and alert. So please, go to sleep. And now the big day is here. It's the morning of your incredibly important test. Hopefully that didn't stress you out. It's really not that big a deal. First of all, you wanna make sure to fuel yourself with plenty of healthy food and water. As I mentioned with carbo loading, it's important to get those nutrients and energy to fuel your brain and your body. I mean, your brain is a part of your body. They're not that separate. But of course, at the same time, you don't want to overdo it because the worst feeling in the world is bubbling in your freaking multiple choice answers and then suddenly you have to pee. Because that's what happened to me during the AP US history exam. So I left halfway through the multiple choice questions because my bladder could not take it. The next thing to do is warm up. Again, kind of like how an athlete needs to warm up and stretch their arm and leg muscles, you need to warm up and stretch your brain muscle. So I would recommend you just do a few practice questions or look over things just a little bit, or even warm up your brain in a way that isn't related to the subject at all. Maybe you can read a book or a news article. You know, just something light and simple, but it gets the gears turning in the correct way. It's not gonna be a full workout, just like an athlete would not do a workout right before their race. It's just some warming up. You might also want to actually warm up your body as well, not just your brain. Get your blood flowing with just some quick short exercises. You know, you can touch your toes, do some jumping jacks, and some light exercise can also be useful for the next step, which is to relax. Yes, I am aware that telling someone to calm down has 
exactly the opposite effect. So I'm not telling you to relax, I'm just advising you to use any relaxation techniques that work for you. For example, you can do some deep breathing exercises or some yoga, or maybe you can watch cat videos on TikTok, my favorite pastime. Anything that works for you to acquire calmness, that is what I recommend you do. The reason this is so important is a concept called the yerkes dodson Law. Not sure if I'm pronouncing that correctly because I wrote a paper about it, but I did not have to say the name out loud for successful completion, so I don't know how to say any words. But what this law of psychology states is that, in general, you will perform worse on a hard task if you're at a higher anxiety level, but you'll perform better at a hard task if you're at a lower anxiety level. Of course, the reason this is relevant is because on easy tasks, you'll do actually better if you're on a higher anxiety or energy level, but, but I'm gonna assume you consider your test a hard task. Of course, no worries if you do feel nervous. A little bit of adrenaline can just add a little kick, a little spice. It can actually end up helping you out because, you know, I do feel that I run my best cross-country and track races when I'm just a teeny tiny bit running on adrenaline. And the same can definitely be true for taking tests. Just remember that you are so prepared. You are absolutely ready to go out and kill it. I mean, just go back and watch this video from the beginning. You've already done so much to get to the point that you are at right now. This portion of the video is sponsored by Squarespace, the all-in-one website building platform. And today I wanted to highlight the ways that Squarespace makes it super easy to start your own online business. To begin with, if you're selling products, they have a lot of different templates, which are also mobile responsive, so you can set up your own professional looking storefront. Then they also have inventory and shipping tools to help you with every step along the way. If you're selling professional services, they have templates for that too. They also have in-platform scheduling services so that you can easily set up appointments with your potential clients. To get started with 10% off your first website or domain, visit squarespace.com slash studyquill. I hope you found this video helpful, and if you'd like to see more of my videos about life as a student, I upload new ones every week. I also post photos of my notes and bullet journal on my Instagram, which is at studyquill. See you next time!